Welcome back to the third hour of the Nutramedical Report, a Clay and Iron Show. And, of course, uh, our amazing guests, uh, John Moore and Ann Morrison, uh, the uh, anchors in our third hour. This is a very important hour of the week. In fact, it's one of the most popular. I guess it was a joke in the first hour of the show today with uh, Michelle. That they said their favorite hour was hour three. And she said, no, no, I mean, hour one, right? <laughs> Which is a firing line where we answer wellness questions. Uh, a lot of people want to know what's going on. We had an excellent uh, show on Wednesday. We want to thank you, John, for uh, directing Professor McCanny to coming on the program. You're welcome. And uh, I know you're very busy, and I heard an ad that you're actually going to be one of the main presenters at a major preparedness uh, seminar coming up at, uh, and maybe you want to announce that first, because your website is thelibertyman.com, but you're going to be one of the big presenters at this uh, conference coming up. Where is that? That's going to be in Springfield, Missouri. That will be in November, the November 3rd and 4th. Um, the website for all that is usapreparers.com. Now, your, your ear is to the ground, just like the good natives that would know when the buffalo were running uh, many miles away. And you have contacts inside the military. What, what is transpiring? There's an awful lot of war games going on, a lot of preparedness occurring on right. the part of the government. In other words, they're twitchy. Almost like when you know the wildebeest are acting a little bit twitchy. You know that they they can smell the lions and the lionesses are nearby. Exactly. Well, Doctor Bill, the, the uh, my people are very concerned, as you might imagine. What's coming down is highly compartmentalized, and uh, the people I associate with, they know uh, in general terms the time frame, which would be uh, sometime beginning next week and going through maybe the first or second week of November. Uh, they know that the possibilities, which uh, include a contrived uh, financial collapse, uh, a nuclear weapon, or, or some similar type of event in, in an American city, or in World War III starting and getting out of control. Uh, those are the three main scenarios that we're concerned about, and, uh, besides, you know, the swine flu, getting out of control, and, and other ancillary matters. So uh, everybody's kind of uh, waiting with bated breath, I guess you could say, to see what's going to happen and when. Uh, as we always advise, people should be living a life of preparedness, not looking for a specific date or waiting for a specific uh, timetable. Uh, if you're living a life of preparedness, you don't need to anguish over a specific date or scenario, do you? No, in fact, um, we've got a 40-plus list. I'm actually going to post it up with some updates here shortly. Um, you've got some other news that's been going on, because tomorrow, again, is October 13th. It's not a Friday. But the high-level, if you want to call it the Satanic Illuminati Masons, do have special ceremonies on the 13th. Uh, it's a day when infamy happens that um, we should be aware of that everything that goes on in the world is ceremonial. We talked about this earlier this week with Freeman. And the issue is that uh, Obama is slipping. And Obama is pretty desperate. The powers that be even that manipulate the election might have to do a real major job of stealing the election with vote fraud because it appears that Romney is rising along with Paul Ryan and uh, as I use a little bit of humor here <clears throat> Mormons are not Christians but he's conservative and I do believe since 2008 that Romney is pro-life now I think that he actually could fix the economy or fix it to an extent what I'm concerned about is if we get another term of Obama this uh, nation if you just look at the video clips which I'm going to post up about Obamacare, very little of it deals with health care. Most of it is getting into your bank accounts, controlling every move you make. Right. It literally is laying the groundwork for the mark of the beast in a totalitarian state, which of Absolutely. course Obama is a red diaper baby. Under Romney, the, the, the Mormons want to be considered as Christians. They're not, okay? But by and large, they're, they're more conservative on pro-life issues and family issues than even most Christians. So let's face the facts. We have a business manager who can probably manage the country. We have a pro-life Catholic in Ryan. We have people who actually believe in a constitution and the rule of law, and they believe in not having activist judges, which, of course, Biden said last night they're going to appoint more activist judges to make certain they continue to do mass murder of the unborn. That's right. So, so let, let's face it. I'm not going to vote for a candidate, uh, libertarian or otherwise, who will result in effectively in the re-election of a destroyer of the nation Obama who's an empty suit and a complete puppet of the global maniacs that want to use 
the collapse of the American economy to create a Federal Reserve converted to a World Reserve Bank and a biometric world currency that is, quote, the mark of the beast. And people say, oh, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. We're so no, close to this disaster. You're not, you're, not exa- you're not exaggerating in the least. Uh, you, you still used the term there, red diaper baby. I assume that uh, refers to him being groomed since he was being potty trained to be both right. a communist and be president. Uh, exactly. His, his, his so, entire background is all Marxist and communist. Uh, well, probably both of his parents. Probably both of his parents. Well, both were of them were. And, them. and uh, every every major influencer in his life, from the time he's being potty trained, uh, was a Marxist or communist. Right. So he, he, uh, he's a product. He, you know, he can't help what he is because he was uh, he was immersed in this culture, and it's all he knows. He, it's what he thinks is right and proper. Well, I, I, first off, I, the man is an average intelligence. He's not a genius. Secondly, no. he, he he wants to feel, feel belonged, so we try to connect with one of the other father, his real father, Frank Marshall Davis. And if you look at the documentary by Joel Gilbert, Dreams of My Real Father, you can see it's evident. There's no room for argument. As I said on the show the other day, we had Joel on for half an hour. There's less air in the arguments over whether or not Obama is a communist and a product of Frank Marshall Davis and his communist mother, whose father was a CIA operative, working with, supposedly against the communists, although he's shooting shots with Frank Marshall Davis in Hawaii, his, you know, Obama's grandfather, right. that we're actually dealing with someone who's an infiltrator into the American culture to destroy it and convert America's Federal Reserve System and destroy the middle class. That's why when Obama says he's for the middle class, no, he's for destroying the middle class. So there's only an underclass, like in the Soviet Union, they're trying to Sovietize America, so only the super elite like him and his wife and a few other people, the, the Chicago right. elite like Jer- uh, uh, Valerie Jarrett, etc., and, uh, and, and Bill Ayers, these people make all the decisions, like their death panel, 15-member panel that decide what's good. They're not just reducing the cost of a tube that goes into medical equipment or controlling cross the drugs which would be rational no no they're going to decide with value judgments what therapies quote work statistically and otherwise and add value years they'll decide who gets a dialysis and who gets a transplant and who doesn't that's well, called we're, rationing we're, we're, we're already we're already at that point dr bill I, right. I, i've known for quite a few years that once you sign up with medicare a doctor who is a medicare provider is prohibited from offering anything that Medicare doesn't cover, even if you want to pay cash for it. Right. So that's, that's not, it's just an expansion of what we already have. And also the um, VA, I call it a very awful hospital system, where, in fact, if you try to offer them more, um, you actually get fired from the VA. They'll fire you if you even discuss more. And that's why a lot of these insurance plans, they'll remove you from the provider network if you offer treatments or advice or things that, quote, are out of system. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so it's just an expansion of what we already have. We're, we've already got that system. This is going to be the system on the supercharger once it gets passed. And by the Obamacare. way, this is, worse than, this is worse than Canadian or British uh, National Health Service. It's not a new system like the South Korean or Taiwanese system that basically includes everything, and you direct it. You're the boss. You can have natural care, acupuncture. You take. You can have a professional trainer and use it to your taxes. You can take nutraceuticals. You can actually manage your body better because you're the best person to do that. Absolutely. Instead, big government's going to control everything. Now, here's a timeline I expect to happen. If the election starts to slide, it would not surprise me in the next few weeks. We have a false flag. Now, right now we're into day 10 of shelling of Syria. That shelling started with a... Al-Qaeda member, probably paid by Saudi Arabia, Qatar, or Arab, Arab Emirates, to shell a Turkey city and kill five people, women and children. Turkey city, so that they would start shelling from Turkey into Syria, 10 kilometers in. All right. The, they, they downed two days ago a, a Syrian jet flying from Russia to, to Syria, which is, again, a violation of federal uh, international aviation law and sovereignty of the air. And they said there were weapons and bullets on board. Welcome back, and um, and let's get to your report first on the uh, this now fourteen thousand people at risk of the fungal meningitis and fungal sepsis. And by the way, the sporogenes fungal infections 
uh, can last for months or years. Uh, they're supposed to be just injected around joints and other areas, but these people are dying of fungal meningitis, which means whether they've had previous surgery and have anomalous anatomy or nerve tracts, uh, or tracts where they're there is extrusion of a cerebral spinal fluid and can go either way back into the cerebral spinal space and then cause meningitis. These spore, fungal spores of aspergillus and other fungi, the connection is that apparently one of the components of the vac of these shots was processed from corn, and obviously the corn was maybe infected with these fungi because of the current drought conditions, which stress the fungi and make more spore production and uh, increase the risk that you're going to get more fungal mycotoxins. So, in other words, this is a byproduct of climate change and sloppiness where, I mean, at the very least, it's sloppiness. At the worst is, maybe these people were doing at these laboratories research on fungal military operations, bioweapons, and they crossed their wires, but I tend to think it's just stupidity that they uh, didn't properly process these and include live fungi and fungal spores. Well, yeah, and what worries me is that it doesn't sound like the CDC. The CDC makes it sound like these things are airborne and they're getting into, they're contaminating the medicine through the air. But I don't think that's right because there wouldn't be that much spores in the air there. No, uh, no, I think I, I, I think, coming, uh, yeah, I think it's I, coming I, into the raw materials. Yeah, I think it's the raw material. I mean, there's two possibilities if you think about it logically. As I say, when you hear hoofbeats, it's probably horses and not zebras. It's either contaminated material that's not properly processed, or it's a bioweapon experiment where they directly contaminate it with other material from a project that's involved with fungal bioweapon development. Now, most people don't realize this, and I've quoted it before. 85% of the past 30 years of U.S. biological weapons research is not in creating the weapons that are uh, a virus or a bacterium of death, you know, like Ebola. It's creating fungal mycotoxins that can be dispersed very quickly, can be neutralized and have a very short half-life, but have persistence in an area longer than a gas cloud like the First or Second World War of a neurotoxin. So they have persistence. And um, that's where most of the research has gone. 85% of the money on biological weapons research has been in fungal mycotoxins and fungi. Uh, well, so. the CDC and the USDA have decided that they will not they will not do prophylactic uh, fungal. Uh, uh, they won't use the uh, fungal, the antifungal medications that they have on people that are not displaying symptoms. That's really now, stupid. Is, that to me that's, is, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's criminal. First that's off, criminal. If, if, you're, if you're out there and you've had these shots and you're listening or you have friends, number one, you want to take Immunomax or Nutri-Immune capsules for immunoglobulins. You want to take all three antipathogenics. 20 drops a day, three times a day of Nutridyne, Alamed, and at least two capsules to three capsules three times a day, and Silver 100, two sprays or six drops for every 10 pounds body weight three times a day under the tongue. If you do that, number one, these spores will never activate and turn into infection, but you need to stay on the high dose for probably a month, lower dosage, half that dosage for two to three months, and a continued maintenance dosage literally indefinitely. Now, I tell people this because our world is being roasted with toxic pathogens, and they travel everywhere. They travel through the lithosphere, through the atmosphere. They travel in airlines. If you go into an airliner, there's no filtration system. It's crazy. So, John, in terms of preparedness, people aren't ready that we're probably going to enter, as I say, the new world order wearing a mask. It won't be a gun so much as their head is, is they'll literally collapse the population with financial collapse like a bank holiday and the spread of a bioweapon. And uh, they'll try to make it plausibly deniable like a new version of the flu or the spread like this new um, SARS-like virus, coronavirus, which, by the way, was a weapon-specific virus that was specifically killed 16 times more Asian people than people that were white or other genetic descent. Right. So, so we right. know that the SARS virus, which is now bursting out again, it probably indicates that they've now decided to release another race-specific coronavirus on the population, especially of Asians. Uh, right. Actually, Saudi Arabians. Yeah, well, there's Probably one that I've heard is, is one that is specifically more tuned to kill people of Middle Eastern descent. Yes, the new yeah. one. Yeah, the new one. It's killing them like flies. Uh, well, race-specific race, race biological weapons has been a dream of the one-world people for decades, and it looks like they finally developed them. Now they're actually using them. 
Yeah, and as far as they, they're spreading because it happened just at the time of the Hajj, which is going on right now. So that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, John, do you have any other insight about this mid-October event? Any other uh, kind of noise or chatter? Uh, well, the, the, uh, what we've heard from several sources uh, all saying the same thing is that when this thing goes down, uh, you're not going anywhere. That where, when, wherever you are is where you're going to be for some period of time. Uh, there won't there won't be any movement of any consequence around. Yeah, the in other words, I have the same sources of uh, information telling me that number one will have American and foreign troops. And I got the, I saw the actual manual back in nineteen uh, uh, sorry two thousand uh, before two thousand one in nineteen ninety seven when I worked with the FEMA guys. Their plan is to have American troops on the main freeway uh, areas, and then the, what's called a peripheral or circum. The provincial highways that go around big cities, and in right. the quote the off-road areas are going to have foreign troops and special uh, sniper teams and special foreign troops, including Canadian, Federalists from Mexico, European, and former and, and even uh, Chinese or Russian troops there. And uh, the idea is to have these in areas where they can prevent all transport. Number one, then they'll have special forces people at the banks because they want to shut the banks down. And uh, and of course, this would just be a lot of this is for theater because what they want to do is convert the Fed Reserve, which is basically U.S. They can print as much money as it wants and cause a currency war. They want it to convert it to a world reserve bank. And when they do that, they want it to convert it from a regular currency to a biometric one, where you can only travel through airports, which are, by the way, every airport on Earth is UN territory. Most people don't know that. They think you can pass a law and you can stop the you know TSA from abusing you and feeling your testicles or doing a body cavity search or squeezing your wife's breast. No. You're in an area called the abuse zone because it's UN territory. It's not US ground. It's not Canadian or European. It's United Nations. The New World Order already exists and people say, oh, you're just a conspiracy theorist. I said, you are an idiot. I said, there's no cure for being that stupid to not realize this is not something that's yet future years, months, days, and centuries. It's already happened and it's been here for years. That's right. It's already here. And it's already here. Like otherwise, it's foolish. All right. Yeah, it's just a matter of like people say, oh, they're going to get into all my emails. I said, every email was always analyzed by AI systems. Every <laughs> phone fax. I had I had one guy working the Signal Saturn systems. It was a, was a, a special operative in East Germany. And he operated an equipment company, worked in contract work for, for the uh, no such agency, NSA. And he was a former special operative in East Germany. And he told me, he said, we can tell the dial tone polynomial frequency spectral analysis of your phone and tell you whether or not you're on the phone in your bathroom or your kitchen in Basra. Now he said this to me, he said this to me years before the great wars. In other words, this is back in the mid 90s, 1994. Right. I've heard the same thing for at least seven, eight years. Dr. Bill, I need to get yeah. screwed out of here. This will be the Liberty Man signing off. Yeah, anything breaking, Thanks, give sir. us a shout uh, or put something, give me a show, we'll get it up on our live stream TV channel. Uh, and when we come back, we'll talk more about this fungal issue. And uh, we're going to be joined here shortly with Alexander Bachman. Joining us, uh, Alexander Bachman and Morrison John has uh, now left the scene, but he's amazing. Uh, updates every week. You want to listen to his radio show over at Republic Broadcasting, 7 to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday to Friday. Uh, Alexander, tell us the latest what you're seeing. Of course, from your, your perch in Mexico, you can see things happening around the world, uh, as many people don't. You see the spiritual side as well as the geopolitical and financial side. We're hurtling very quickly toward a cataclysm, and that cataclysm, people don't understand, is a lot closer than they realize, and long before the cold tribulation, there's bad times coming. Things are going to happen that are going to be very unpleasant. Exactly. What we're seeing on the, on the world stage is uh, now uh, a full-scale war uh, beginning to take form. We've got Turkey with NATO siding with NATO, trying to go into Syria. Now, that's a perfect pretext to legally go into Syria, and uh, the 
while the ambulances are filled with explosives and travel throughout the cities in Syria and blow up and kill civilians, that's the reality of a terrible war gone bad, trying to uh, depose uh, uh, al-Assad. But uh, on our front over here in Mexico, south of the border, I mean, there is no difference. We have 120,000 people dead, uh, thousands of children displaced, uh, tens of thousands of, of women dead, uh, young people. Uh, beta yeah. test yeah. for the extermination of humanity, basically. Yeah. That's what this uh, six-year yeah. uh, uh, insanity... Roll back a bit, Alexander. Like, you said yeah. some numbers there that most people didn't grasp. The number dead in the last eight, four years in Mexico exceeds by multiples all the dead in the last four years in Iraq and Afghanistan. Exactly. That's how bad it is. People don't get this. They don't understand. We're, we have a literally a civil war between the drug cartel gangs... And the Mexican government, and Mexican government finally turned on them. The U, the problem is that some of these cartels are directly allied with the U.S. government that are just shunting in drugs through ships and airplanes, bring them into the U.S. market to the tune of one and a half trillion dollars a year. And so it's a fight really between the certified drug sources and the non-certified drug sources and the ones that are going to be attacked by the Mexican and American government with the new integrated offices of the Office of Binational Intelligence in Mexico City, Ciudad Juarez, and uh, where's the other place? Uh, where the, uh, oh, Tijuana. They have one in the central uh, offices in Mexico City where I'm going to be in right. November. Right. Uh, I'm going to be mm -hmm. a block away, so I'm going to maybe go make a little video report there. and. Yeah. Uh, we have the other one in Ciudad Juarez and the other one in Tijuana. Right now, so they're 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 monitoring all communications, email, fax, any any chatter where you use specific words like the one I'm going to use right now. They scan. What right? word is that? And they what put that into the use? fusion center databases. Right. By the way, those fusion centers spend billions of dollars. The General Accounting Office said this didn't require anything except information on American citizens. It had no effect in stopping quote terrorism. The ultimate terrorist is government. Government. And even when these terrorists do things spontaneously, they've been, it's like taking a bad dog and hitting them with a stick so they bite. Uh, we create that, or our governments create that, because it's useful. It's useful to aggravate these people. And the drone strikes, the latest ones, of course, are killing us in Pakistan. Not only uh, so-called people that are Taliban or these other tribal groups that are our enemies, but they're killing lots of civilians. And the Pakistanis are enraged over Even the ones that want to be allied with America, they're enraged. They're boiling over the, on this, which is why the stupid comments from, you know, the so-called vice president, Biden, what an idiot he is, Grinning, smirking, jokester, laughing, arrogant, etc. And then he says, "Well, we're just going to pull out." Well, what do you mean you're just going to pull out? Every spring, as as uh, Paul Ryan said, the calendar works the same every year. When the winter snows come, they don't come across the passes from Pakistan. There's no fighting. When the snow goes, the fighting comes back because that leaky border. They come streaming right in, and it wouldn't matter if the year is 2012 or 2060. There'll still be Taliban coming across the border to fight and take over Afghanistan. Well, why do you think the Soviets gave up in the 80s, you know? <laughs> right, they gave up because they logistically they didn't see a military solution to the problem, at least a conventional military. I have some unconventional ideas, which I won't expand on right now, but there's ways of dealing with this. Exactly, and uh, last Saturday it was reported that the, the top lieutenant or the leader of the Zeta cartel was killed uh, in uh, Piedras Negras, near Piedras Negras, Coahuila, where, you know, when we reported on your show that uh, a massive battle is underway. Mm -hmm. Well, we have more intelligence about this. The cadaver of this guy was mysteriously disappeared from the funeral parlor where he was uh, taken to. Now, according yeah. to DEA databases, this guy measured about 1.72 meters. Uh, and uh, according to the cadaver, he measured 1.60 meters. So he's uh, 12 centimeters shorter. Something's wrong, or it's the wrong guy. Uh, you're a doctor. Can you, can you uh, make someone smaller after they die? Yes, you can. <laughs> Uh, now, first, yeah, 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 the there's a, there's a recipe they teach us. Osama bin Laska, uh, yeah. his name was Lascano Lascano. They called him yeah. uh, the Undertaker. 
because right. he killed so many people. Remember when we talked about the assassination of people in Tamaulipas and San Fernando where they grabbed the people right. off the buses and raped the women and killed all the people? Right. Okay, this is the guy. So Now, what happened is, I know your reference to Osama. All throughout the Middle East, they actually announced in the newspapers all over the Middle East the actual death and burial after renal failure of Osama bin Laden back, you know, 11 years ago. So, of course, they resurrected him just like, you know, zombies. And this guy here, obviously, the only way to make him shorter is either to behead him, cut his feet off, you know, maybe something or below the knees, uh, or he's the wrong guy. So, unless they have a special shrunken body formula where they can kind of dunk him in hot oil and then shrink him that way. Maybe they did that. Well, literally, he was at a baseball game in the middle of a war zone, according to the uh, Secretary of Navy. And uh, the the same Secretary of Navy said that they found out it was him 24 hours later, but by then the body had disappeared because the armed men stormed the funeral parlor where he his body was. Shuck Stern, yeah. isn't, it, isn't it convenient? Now, not only that, who knows if he made a deal to say, hey, this guy is such a hot guy that killed so many people, but guess what? He's going to give you even more up to the intelligence sources to kind of clean out the rest of the rat's nest. We'll let the guy go and even get plastic surgery to change his identity, and he can slide off to Indonesia, just like I mentioned about Saddam Hussein. Probably his double died years ago, but my guess is Saddam is still getting a hot rock massage in Indonesia at his own private palace. And uh, our uh, embedded asset within Coahuila has given us very valuable information this week. It is confirmed Al-Qaeda is working directly with the Zeta cartel, uh, directly with training right. operations and camps in northern parts of Mexico. We also have information of... Uh, so, in, in other words, the drug cartels are working directly with uh, the Muslim terrorists, and they're not only across the Mexican side, but they're inside America right now. In fact, the number one cause of abductions in Phoenix, Arizona, is drug cartel activity from Mexico. Exactly. So we have these elite state forces, supposedly, that were hired by the state of Coahuila, uh, called Gates, they're called Gates, uh, uh, Special Tactical Armed Forces, but it turns out that they were trained in Muslim nations as well. Oh, isn't that wonderful? They probably originally had advanced American training by Special Forces and Delta and, and SEAL teams, etc. So they have all these weapons and tactics and advanced communication equipment. Oh, yes. They brought in some communication equipment that nobody's ever seen, not even the Mexican military has. And it turns out that these guys that form the gate, the gate group have received orders to go into all towns and start exterminating whoever comes in their way. And there's videos coming out in the streets of Piedras Negras where they're uh, systematically killing people on the street. They put them down on their knees and just fire away at their heads. Yeah, in other words, what you're talking about, the, the extermination of Mexico is a beta test for America. Yes, I mean, it's under siege. The entire city of Piedras Negras, which is on the border with Eagle Pass, is under siege, yeah. is under total control. The yeah. state of Coahuila. And we know that there's a very top, uh, very high level interest behind cleaning up the northern part of Mexico in order for Enrique Peña Nieto to come into power. Welcome back. Uh, and let's talk about space weather for a minute. Um, Dive into it. Asteroid flyby today, October 12th only, 96,000 kilometers or 0.25 lunar distances away, a 16-meter object. We also have the draconid uh, meteor shower, two, up to 2,000 meteors per hour are going through. The draconid came through on October 8th. Uh, that's from the Alpha Draconis uh, red star called the Eye of the Dragon, which is up in the uh, near the North Pole or the Polaris. Um, that's really interesting, and of course, there's a big uh, radio storm on Jupiter. You actually go to spaceweather.com, and you can actually hit the sound button. You can hear the dynamic spectral analysis, courtesy of Wes Greenman, Radio Alaqua Observatory. So he can they have a radio telescope that actually has translated into sounds. So you can hear it, and then of course down here, there's something I want you to kind of expand upon. <laughs> the well, uh, real time. I mean, I want yeah. to say something about the drag noise. They think yeah. that, that that is caused by a meteor that uh, left a stream of dusty debris as yes. part of the uh, as part of the Earth orbit. Now we know there's another comet that's coming in. It's going to pass two million miles from the sun, and it's due to do that in uh, November. Uh, uh, now the Earth is not going to pass through it. It's not going to it's not going to pass through the tail of that comet, but Mars is. 
Yeah, yeah in fact, we had uh, Jim McCanny on. It's actually, according to Jim, it's going to pass within uh, a little over a million miles from the sun, which is much closer even than Mercury. So oh. it's going to actually go through what's called the the uh, the actual chromosphere of the sun. The actual, oh you know, yeah. And he said uh, the the interaction because this is a really big one. This is a really big uh, comet. Uh, you remember, he, uh, his statement was, like with Velikovsky, went over it, that, that, that Venus was a comet that was captured that's Earth size. And that's why it spins backwards. And, and if you look at the chemistry and so on, it looks like a very young planet. So it's actually a captured planetary comet sized object that came into the inner solar system. He also said that there are multiple objects we need to worry about. Sedna, which was discovered some years ago, there's actually now 40 planets that are any size objects in the Oort cloud region. So they'd have to expand them. So they demoted Pluto, uh, not because they wanted to add Sedna, but because now they have over 40 of them. And there's very good evidence there's at least one object that's five times the mass of Jupiter in the Oort cloud, which is the outer solar system. Five times the mass of Jupiter. And there's really good evidence that there's a periodic return of a red dwarf star that comes into our solar system. So, uh, okay, tons well, the of evidence comet, of this. Yeah. This comet that's coming in in November, although it's not going to impact the orbit of the Earth, it is going to impact the orbit of Mars, and it actually may change the orbit of Mars. And yeah, in fact, uh, that, he's saying that the people yeah. that planned the Curiosity mission didn't take that into effect. Yeah, in fact, uh, what Dr. McKenney said is the it's going to pass significantly for days or even weeks, the tail of the comet. Uh, so it will change the atmosphere of Mars. It also could change the orbit, pull it in or out, uh, uh, and it will have dramatic plasma effects. You'll actually be able to see with regular telescopy plasma discharges between the comet and the planetary surface because it's going to have, you know, these are highly charged objects. So uh, it should be really uh, interesting. That light show will be on October 3rd, is the actual mass main Passover day, but it'll be before and after in October, November next year. There's also, of course, the 2012 DA-14, which is going to be 197 uh, meters across. That object is now continuing to be calculated as closer and closer, but they stopped giving us data in May as it got under 5,000, get under 5,000 uh, kilometers above Earth. That's pretty close. It's likely to have some... 5,000 miles. It wasn't kilometers. 5,000 5, miles. miles, sorry. 5,000 miles. But that's still pretty close. Uh, that's oh, close it, enough. It, could... Well, that was... Yeah, that was after we we went to the surface of the Earth instead of the... Uh, they were saying it was 17,000 miles, but they were measuring that to the center of the Earth. So if you take off the diameter of the Oh, Earth that's the clever. Radius, then Very you clever. get 5,000 miles. And that is close enough that it could... Crash. I mean, they're... And t the condition code on that was a five, which means that it was a really big uh, error number. They, in, in other words, when they calculated the orbit, uh, yeah. they didn't. They didn't. Uh, they they have a big error in the orbit, and we know the military said that if that they were no longer going to release any information about near Earth objects that came down through their. Classified it was military. after that object that was identified. They actually calculated out that if that object literally grazed the Earth, which we think happened with Tunguska in 1910, I think it was, in Russia, in the Siberian yeah. area, that yeah. this object is about the same size. So that wiped out 800 square miles of territory, which is, you know, the size of uh, Luxembourg. Luxembourg, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it could do the same. And it also would have major climatic effects on the whole planet. So... Um, yeah, we need to be very careful around February 15th. Yeah, February 15th. By the way, this is the ones they're telling us about. There's probably other objects like, oh, whoops, we have one that goes at 68,000 miles an hour like the one two years ago that they say, oh, my gosh, we, we missed that one. It's like, that was a big object. Now, we have this Canadian astronomy and, 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 uh, and astronaut that supposedly was reported up for two days, but I can't find the actual screenshot of his report. Uh, from anybody. So if anybody's out there and you can find that screenshot, I saw reports by this astronomer that basically he was warning against near Earth objects, which is. But when you have somebody that's getting really wide out, wild eyed about it and they're in the know, it means that the problem is a lot bigger than the public realizes, and we're in a dangerous territory of space where a lot of these objects are being stirred up. They're being stirred up because of the return of the red dwarf star, uh, what we call the destroyer, Heraclitus. I call it the Passover star. And uh, that Passover star comes by periodically. It doesn't come, need to come anywhere near Earth. It can pass, what I've heard from reports is it won't come anywhere nearer than 55 million miles from Earth. But that's enough to cause plasma, plasma discharges from the sun, gravitonic effects, and effects on the Oort cloud and the impact 
of comets and asteroids that could be pulled into our uh, the shooting range of Earth. Let's put it that way. Okay, so, getting a little closer to Earth. When the new moon, when the moon is new, it's between the sun and the Earth, and so it shields the Earth from the solar winds. And uh, the the uh, stratosphere and the atmosphere of Earth kind of settle down. But then as that moon waxes and moves away from being new, then the uh, solar wind then buffets the Earth's atmosphere, and it causes, uh, it's like a shock to the atmosphere, and you get these beautiful auroras, and they're, uh, they're, they, are, they are in the sky right now. It's only been two or three days since the new moon. So right. that's and that, that picture, by the way, you predicted that. That was amazing because you're a good scientist. You actually predicted that. And here you see the beautiful picture of this area. Uh, uh, oh, that was, was Jim that? McCann- that was Jim McCanny that said that. Yeah, this one on here, a picture show. that they show up on Space Weather, was in uh, Lakensgund, Norway, on October 10th. <laughs> and, and it's and you look at it and say, well, is it ever pretty? But, of course, it means there's plasma discharges of these high-energy particles, you know, whipping through the upper troposphere and ionosphere, creating that... Uh, yeah, it means that the Earth's atmosphere was was shocked yeah. by the solar okay, well, wind. Well, want to summarize some of the timeline things that are going on because uh, you know Lindsay Williams is saying they're holding off the price until it goes higher. Today, when I put gas in my car because I get the top for quality gas, it's just a hair under five dollars a gallon. Here, I think it's four eighty nine uh, a gallon. That's crazy. Uh, it's going to go higher uh, because they're pushing this war in the Middle East. They don't have the production facilities or distribution lines to bring down the Bakken or the oil from the oil tar sands in Canada, and they've literally stopped the drilling at the Prudhoe Bay, Bay uh, Liberty Rig, which is British Petroleum. It's drilling down to 40,000 feet, which, quote, may not have the ability of pressure valves that can handle 50,000 to 60,000 PSI, pounds per square inch. Uh, as I mentioned back in 1999 to Hayseed Stevens, I said, if you do an abiotic drill, and I told him this, because I said it was supernatural. I gave him the geology. We had FICO there, the oil engineer from the Israeli oil company that worked with uh, Ariel Sharon. He is the engineer that discovered all the oil fields in Zohar, which is east of the Dead Sea, and in the Sinai Peninsula. All those gas fields and oil fields FICO discovered. And I described specifically and supernaturally exactly where the oil fields are in the abiotic cap at the southwest end of the Dead Sea. I told him there was 27.2 trillion barrels of renewable abiotic oil at the southwest end, and it was the mother load of the Middle East. Now, if they drill down there, I said, if you hit this abiotic oil at 35 to 40,000 feet, the sound will be so loud, you'll hear it in Jerusalem. Okay? <laughs> and it'll be cracking your ears at over 100 decibels. So, what people need to understand is they probably can't control this oil no better than they can control the oil at the Macondo drill site. So we could be having an Alaskan disaster up there, of course, which will fit perfectly with the Obama regime if they get this cool green energy idea, which is crazy. There's lots of oh, safe oil the, and gas. Yeah. By the way, we're getting methane at the Louisiana sinkhole. Ah, and that okay. means that that not only have they cracked the deep uh, areas of the earth, but there's a direct link between the Louisiana sinkhole, the Macondo drill site, which they shouldn't have been drilling into. They've known this since 1951. And the New Madrid fault structures, which could strike... 25 plus reactors within strike distance of losing containment from a great New Madrid earthquake. The largest earthquake, by the way, in the continental United States was at New Madrid back in, I think, was it 1811? Well, or if they tapped into the uh, methane clamprey cavern, too. Yeah, amazing. Oh boy, as I say, get your tray tables in the locked and upright positions, be in prayer. Get yourself be a prepper every day. Don't wait for a specific event to start getting ready. 